Easter eggs you never noticed in Demon Slayer. Wait, what? Did I just see Kaneki from Tokyo Ghoul and Tanjiro's Dream? Yeah, you heard that right. We are about to unveil the raddest Easter eggs that have been chilling in plain sight throughout the Demon Slayer series. Trust me, you'll want to stick around till the end of this video. These Easter eggs are the kind that'll make you rewatch Demon Slayer with a whole new set of eyes. Number one. So in Demon Slayer season two, the outro begins with a really striking image. Rengoku's distinctive flame-shaped sword guard. It's quite the attention grabber. And then, out of nowhere, Tanjiro swoops in and snatches that sword guard right from the air. It's almost like he's seizing Rengoku's legacy, his essence. This action, Tanjiro grabbing the guard, is a visual metaphor of how Tanjiro is carrying forward Rengoku's spirit. See, Rengoku was all about this fiery determination and an unyielding sense of optimism. He had this vibrant personality that just left a mark on everyone who met him, and Tanjiro is kind of taking all that upon himself. It's like he's becoming an embodiment of Rengoku's will and his whole way of looking at life. Even after he's gone, his spirit is right there in every fight, every struggle. That sword guard that Tanjiro starts carrying around is a constant reminder of Rengoku's presence and his unwavering determination. Number two. You remember how in season one, when Urokodaki's students finished their training, they got these fox-themed masks for the final selection. Those masks were enchanted with a protection spell, a final layer of defense before they go into the tough trials ahead. But what's cool is that each mask is unique to the person wearing it. Take Sabido, for instance. His mask had that scar just where his real scar was. And then there's Makomo. Her mask had these flowers that were a reflection of the flowers on her kimono. And of course, Tanjiro's mask has that vibrant red sun-like symbol right over his scar. If you've noticed, it kind of matches the design on his Hanafuda earrings, and it foreshadows his sun-breathing style, as if his identity is woven into these symbols. The choice of color, the shapes, it all has these hidden connections that make the story even richer. Number three, in the third season of the series, there's a memorable moment involving Genya where he unexpectedly breaks his sharp, demon-like teeth and hurls them at Tanjiro's head. This action not only showcases Genya's unusual abilities, but also piques our curiosity. However, it's in episode 11 that we're given insight into Genya's unique power and the ability to consume demon flesh and harness its energy essentially becoming a half-demon himself. This revelation raises an interesting question. Did Genya engage in combat with a demon just before arriving at the village? Is there a bigger mystery behind this incident? If you know, enlighten me in the comments below. Number 4. Now let's move on to our wild hero, Inosuke the Beast. Inosuke's introduction into the series is marked by his tough exterior and boisterous behavior. From the very moment he steps onto the screen, he's yelling at everyone, playfully butchering Tanjiro's name. Yet there are moments in the second season where Inosuke's behavior takes on a different tone. In certain scenes, he subtly displays a level of trust and camaraderie with Tanjiro. This is particularly evident in a scene from the first season where he clings to the back of Tanjiro's shirt, almost seeking reassurance. Understanding Inosuke's background adds depth to his actions. Raised by wild animals, his upbringing was devoid of conventional social interactions. Despite this, he yearns for attention and validation, making his behavior a mix of his feral upbringing and his desire for a human connection. Inosuke's admiration for Tanjiro seems to stem from how Tanjiro treats him as an equal, something that likely resonates deeply with Inosuke's longing for acceptance. Number 5. You know that running sequence in the outro of Season 2? It's pretty hilarious how Zenitsu, true to his character, is dead asleep during the whole thing, but he's actually doing that to be in peak combat mode. It gets even funnier when Zenitsu's makeup during this sequence makes him look like a Pokemon. Can you believe the reference there? Both Pikachu and Zenitsu use the power of electricity. That's just cute. Number 6. Now let's talk about our favorite sibling duo, Daki and Gyuro, the upper rank 6 demons. Many of us were disappointed with the upper rank 5 demon in the latest season. He just seemed kinda weak and pathetic. It only took one Miss Tashira to defeat him. Yes, we know, Muichiro is a prodigy and personally trained by the one Hashira Giyu, but it still seemed too easy. Whereas to defeat Daki and Gyuro, it took one sound Hashira, three of our boys, and Nizuko to defeat them. Plus, our Izui Sama lost a hand in the battle. Well, here's the thing the upper rank 5 demon was supposed to be Gyuro all along, who is actually the more powerful one. But Gyuro doesn't care about anything like ranks or status, he only cares about his little sis Daki. Even Muzan said that Gyuro's biggest weakness is Daki. If not for her, he could easily challenge the other upper demons and rise the ranks. Guess Daki really turned out to be Gyuro's biggest downfall after all. But that doesn't change their touching sibling bond and depressing backstory. Number 7. Okay, let's discuss the mastermind behind the demons, Muzan. 
He's the epitome of an antagonist. Strong, dangerous, and with a zero-tolerance policy for anyone who crosses his path. And he's not shy about claiming he's practically a living being, almost on the brink of perfection. But for all his power and bravado, Muzan's got an Achilles heel. He can't survive in the sunlight. That's why he looks pale and whitish. But he absolutely can't handle being called pale or dead. Remember that time he bumped into those drunken humans? At first, he's all chill and willing to let them be, despite their rudeness. But then, they just had to comment on his complexion. His mood flips faster than a coin. Suddenly, he's angry, irritated, and without a second thought, he kills the whole group. It's wild how his fear of death drives him to such extreme reactions. Well, the guy's on this quest for immortality, so the idea of dying is basically his worst nightmare. Number 8. Speaking of dying, we just have to mention the fan favorite, Ren Goku. Tanjiro and Ren Goku both share a pretty quirky addiction. Tanjiro would be totally stoked to realize he's got way more in common with Ren Goku than he might have guessed. So, Ren Goku gets offered some free food by a grateful merchant, and he's all in and ends up buying the entire stock. Tanjiro's got a similar tale when a farmer helps him out. Turns out, both Rengoku and Tanjiro are hooked on squaring away their debts. They can't handle owing anyone any favors. Number 9. You know that part in the Swordsmith Village arc? That's where Muichiro's character changes. At first, he seemed all distant and did not care much about anything. But then, after meeting Tanjiro, he goes through this big change. Suddenly, he starts caring about people and takes on the whole responsibility of being a demon slayer. There's this moment when he sees Tanjiro's eyes and notices how much Tanjiro's eyes look like his own dad's. And that got us all wondering, is Muichiro just being fond of Tanjiro or could there be some family connection between them? See, Muichiro is descended from Yorichi Tsugikuni, the amazing demon slayer who almost took down Muzan. And Tanjiro is related to Sumiyoshi Kamado who lived around the same time as Yorichi. Sumiyoshi and Yorichi were best friends. They were so close that Yorichi gave Sumiyoshi these Hanafuda earrings before he left everything behind. He wanted his legacy to live on through Sumiyoshi's family, and the earrings were a symbol of that promise. So, Muichiro and Tanjiro aren't exactly family, but their families were heart-connected way back. And this cool history is gonna repeat itself because Muichiro and Tanjiro are gonna become best friends and fight demons side by side. Is it destiny or something? Number 10. And it's time for the last one. So in the movie Mugen Train, there's this part that's like a secret Easter egg. It's all about Tanjiro's thoughts and where his inner strength comes from. Remember Enmu? He can mess with people's dreams and sleep, and he's got these four young people who've been through a lot and just want to escape reality in their dreams. Enmu's plan is to find and crush the inner strength of those demon slayers while they are sleeping. Now, in Tanjiro's dream thoughts, Everything's all serene with clear blue skies and calm water. And this really got me excited. This was like a scene right out of the beginning of Tokyo Ghoul. For a moment we thought, is that Kaneki in Demon Slayer? That Tokyo Ghoul scene has the same tranquil vibe with the skies and water. It's not easy to find this Easter egg. And you want to know what really ties it all together? It's that both main characters share the same voice actor, Natsuki Hanai. Damn, 